moron! <laughs> hey, moron! <laughs> look, look, look at me! I'm the water water boy, dude. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, we are the Dallas Cowboys, and of course, we have kind of crazy things that go on with the Cowboys. You, you know, you all, you all know, crazy things go on with the Cowboys, and the Cowboys. They weren't, you know, leopard doesn't change the spots. So the Cowboys weren't going to do anything different. All the with the beginning of free agency, Stephen Jones is a penny pincher who was always going to look for value. Let's be clear here. Let's be clear here. And he just has this aversion to getting guys early in the draft. Now, he's kind of gone through, and I want to play a couple of excerpts of things that we got today from Stephen Jones, where he basically says, I hear you, Cowboy fans. And basically, he knows that he's not going to lose his job, so he's going to do what he's going to do. But let's listen in real quick to what he's got to say here. I mean, that's everybody certainly has that right. I mean, we, uh, you know, I know where the frustration is, the fact that we haven't uh, had success in the playoffs uh, to their satisfaction. Until we do that, then, uh, you know, the criticism uh, is certainly uh, uh, something that's going to be there. And we know that's going to be there, but uh, we're going to stick with what we believe will ultimately uh, get us a championship uh, here for our fans. But, uh, uh, you know, we don't define all in as what you sp uh, spend in free agency. It's keeping, you know, the core, keeping some of the great players in this league, like Dak Prescott, like uh, C.D. Lamb, like Micah Parsons, like Diggs. Uh, you know, that's what we define as all in. As okay, so what he defines as all in is keeping our, our good players. Now, one thing you have to at least say is the Cowboys – have been good at drafting and getting, you know, top. I mean, look, I don't care what you say. Dak Prescott's a top five quarterback, okay? Top five easily. And um, to be a guy who's been a finalist for uh, MVP last two of the last three years, you know, sorry. You can say what you want about paying him this, that, and the other. You've got a guy who's playing, and if you had put in there, if you had a good running game to go along with that and you could have stopped the run, then that would have been fantastic. Um, and that's the way I'm going to look at it. I'm going to try and be a little bit more positive in things because we've been here every year. Every year we've been in the same place. But somehow, some way, they've got a team that's been pretty good. But I'm going to say that I think they have a philosophical difference. Okay? I'm going to say right now, you may call me crazy, but adding Eric Kendrick, who's not the same guy he used to be, but I'm going to tell you, our linebacking room just got better. Overshone comes back. If he's 100% healthy, we are in really good shape. Get Let Damone Clark, you know, not have to be the guy. You've got a good linebacking room, better than you ended up the season with last year. That is an improvement. And I think the Cowboys, their secondary, especially if they sign Stephon Gilmore, you've got a great secondary. Now what we need to start worrying about is addressing the defensive line. We need run stoppers. And if they do that, then, hey, you know, I think, honestly, if they get one real good free agent – whether it's too late for running backs, but whether it's an offensive lineman or whether it's a defensive lineman, that going to the draft, that you have a chance to still improve this team. And they do have ways of being able to get more money once they do finally get the contracts and things done. So this is Stephen Jones's plan for the rest of free agency. I don't look at it as the next few weeks. I look at it as, you know, all the way up and up and through the season in terms of, uh, you know, how we continue to address this. And, you know, just as we all see that first day, uh, first negotiating day, uh, you know, it's, it's wild and it's, and it's big, big, big dollars. And, uh, uh, but then, uh, as you see now, things are calming down and, uh, you know, that's where we think, uh, you know, you can be efficient and, and do, 
do good things. I think we have in the past, and whether it's via trade or whether it's via just a, uh, like we did yesterday with uh, Kendricks. I'm sure there'll be more players released around the league uh, as people move forward and uh, work with, within their cap. So you never know what you might see that you don't see today. So uh, those are all things that we feel very prepared uh, to make quick decisions on and uh, I look forward to it. I don't look at it as... Okay, so there you have it. He's basically saying, you know, as he said before, player acquisition is a 365-day-a-year job, and you always want to look for guys that can make you better. And um, as far as Dak Prescott, you heard them say, you know, all into them is getting those players that you feel are key. Dak Prescott, um, uh, C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, those guys squared away. The thing I hope for, is that they do a better job on these contracts. As other teams are able to make these contracts, they're able to make these contracts so that way it doesn't kill your cap. And that's the problem with the Cowboys is they have actually made these contracts that it just doesn't seem like they know what they're doing. You see Justin Herbert. You see um, Jalen Hurts. You see other quarterbacks that get signed where they're not getting $59 million cap hits. It's not that Dak Prescott has actually made more money than these other guys have. His deal was only $40 million. You explain to me how it is that Jalen Hurts is getting $51 million a year and Dak Prescott's getting 40, but yet Jalen Hurts is chump change in the comparison of it. That goes to the guys that are doing the contracts. So that's what you have right there. Now, this was Stephen Jones, what he said about Dak Prescott um, situation as far as uh, getting him done. I feel like we're able to cut and shoot. Dak's been willing to work with us, which is key, actually. We've had good discussions about him and his contract. He's all in working with us. Okay, so he's all in working with us. And we've had personal discussions with Dak as well. Other than that, that's all we're going to say about that, our negotiations with him. We want to keep that private, won't get into a timeline, but certainly a priority of ours. Now, this is a sea change of where we were last go-round. Last go-round with the negotiations of Dak Prescott, Stephen Jones tried to negotiate in the court of public opinion. Um, where he was basically saying Dak's got to understand he's got to leave some pieces of the pie and everything else on the table for others and so on. And that didn't work out too good. Um, that ended up being that they ended up screwing the pooch and not leaving any pie, pieces of pie on the table because they didn't know how to do the contract. So maybe this is growth and learning on here. Now, as far as Dak Prescott goes, here's what we have from the situation that's going forward. Last week or the week before, Dak Prescott gets a demand letter for $100 million. He talks to the Prosper Police Department and says, I'm being extorted. We're getting more details that are beginning to come out about this whole thing now. All of it just sounds terrible. So after Dak Prescott files a, hundred mil, you know, a lawsuit against her suing her, then, of course, we have 105 The Fan have the accuser um, attorney on there, and the accuser goes on a local to television station, does an interview with her face covered, and um, accuses Dak of rape. Um, more details are coming out, and what I will say is, let's go ahead and see where this goes. Um, the police basically are investigating the extortion side of this. The police are investigating the rape side of this. Unfortunately for the alleged victim, waiting seven years, this sounds like this is going to be his word, her word. I don't know that there's going to be able to come to a resolution on this with it being seven years ago unless there are witnesses to come forward. So I... It, it, the whole thing is a mess, but the $100 million demand, you're going to come to say, I want $100 million? I let you guys figure out what you want to figure out on that. And again, let's let 
the dusk settle on this situation and see where this goes from here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And not knowing, I don't want to say. But I do want to say one thing. If you've been watching behind me here, we've been on for 10 minutes and 20 seconds. When I started this video, we were at 900, I'm sorry, 980,000, oh, excuse me, 98,655 or 65. We've added nine of you. Nine of you have become subscribers just in the time that we've done this video. And we are getting closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers. And I can't thank each and every one of you all enough because this has been a long journey, someplace that I thought we would never go. And this is where I need your input on what you would like to see us do when we do actually hit 100,000 subscribers. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing lots of giveaways and so on and figure out how we're going to celebrate it together. My wife is looking. No, I'm not streaking up here or anything like that. Anything within reason, okay, that is legal, in good taste, not harmful to my life, and so on. So that's where I'd like to find out how we are going to celebrate this milestone. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace.